those of you who do not know me, um, I am Pastor T, um, and I am the pastor here at U City, the uh, church. We are a part and of the late for its family of churches. And if this is your first time here, I want to say thank you. I understand the risk. I do understand the risk and the uncomfortability of walking in a room. You do not know how you will be accepted if, and you will be overlooked or mishandled, but we hope that the person you met walking in brought you hope. And that is our aim, that, that we will be a place of hope and care for you all. Um, and so, welcome, welcome. We are starting a new series. The new series is called, I Am. And, and this series um, is a very beneficial series for us because Jesus made incredible claims of who he was. And over the next four weeks, we are going to learn about who Jesus says that he was. And if we really understand who he says that he is, then that makes a difference for our life. Uh, because of our relationship with him, because of who we are to him, whoever he says he is, we are. Whoever he says he is, we benefit from his claims of him saying who he is. Jesus talked a lot about identity, right? Here's the thing about identity. We, um, we have to, as human beings, we have to identify with something. There is no way that you can't be attached to something. Who you are must attach to something. There is no possible way that it can't. And some of us, <laughs> some of us are attached to success. Some of us are attached uh, to accomplishments. Some of us are attached to goals. Some of us are attached to people. Some of us are attached to things. But we must identify ourselves with something and what Jesus desires for us, that we identify ourselves with him. Because whenever he says he is something, we benefit from whatever he says he is. Jesus' identity rested in his father, in God. And so he's showing us that ours should too. And so this morning we are talking about the first I am. And Jesus makes this incredible claim. He says that I am the good shepherd. Now what does that mean? We will dive into that. But before we dive into that, I just, I just have a question. Like, is this you? Show that again, Daniel. I just, I just want us to. This is me all day. Oh God, Jesus, thank you for saving me. You know what? That looks good. I'm gonna just jump back in. Thank you, Daniel. It, it is, it is remarkable, right? How that <laughs> I can get ten messages from that video, but what I saw, though. Was, was one of the things that I saw was, of course, this sheep being saved from something and then turning, make a U-turn and jumping right back into that thing. Is that you? In any area of your life. But the other thing I saw was, was the person saving the sheep. The patient man taking the sheep out of the Ditch. I don't have that much patience, but Jesus does. And that is why he calls himself the good shepherd. Now, if you are anything like that sheep and you may be in a space where you feel lost, where there's no desire just to move forward, all you see is that 
ditch and you just want uh, just to be in it, you just want it over, you may be hopeless right now. And you may not feel taken care of the way you should. We have this deep desire just to be taken care of in the way that a person cannot. And if you put that weight on a person, they will cripple. Right, we can take care of each other well, but there's this deep yearning, there's this deep of being seen that only God can do. That only God can do. And so we are going to, again, talk about Jesus being the good shepherd. I saw Jesus and that man saving that sheep. And so we are going to start with John 10, and I'm going to set this up. Um, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. Jesus had just healed people. He just healed people, and the Pharisees are still like, nah, like that was good, but like we are better. And so the Pharisees are spiritual leaders of that time. It's Jewish spiritual leaders. They live their life strictly by rules and religious acts. And so, and so Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. They are governing the people, governing the people spiritually. Right? And Jesus is saying this. Jesus told the Pharisees, who they think they are the best leaders, Jesus says this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The higher hand is not the good shepherd. And does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired. He is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. And then the next, next verse says this. That I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen, and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to pick it up again. This a, a command I receive from my father. If, if uh, we can go to the verse 11 back again, Jesus makes this an incredible claim is that he is the good shepherd. But what is a shepherd and what is good? And so, and so shepherd is this. Shepherd is this. I can't throw it on the screen. There we go. Shepherd is this. A person who tends and rears the sheep. Now, like, keep that definition close. A person who tends and rears the sheep. And what is good? Good in this sense, in the purest form, is remarkable. Right? Here's the thing. Jesus says, I am the goat pastor. That's what he's saying. The greatest of all time unmatched. You Pharisees, you religious leaders take from people I give my life for. Now, some of us in here may have been hurt by the church and by pastors. And Jesus is saying, hey, I'm sorry for that, but I am the GOAT pastor, not Pastor T, not T.D. Jakes, not anybody else. I am the GOAT pastor. And then he says, why? And he says, because I am willing to lay my life down for the sheep. Now listen, listen, for a sheep if I see a wolf coming, bye-bye. <laughs> what? 
and I'm going to yell from across the, hey, you stop. Oh, no? Okay, well, have a good dinner, man. But, 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 but Jesus, there, is, there is this power, there's this compassion that Jesus is willing to lay down his life for a sheep. And I hope to get there one day. Jesus says that I am willing to lay my life down for you, and I did. And, and then what happens in our church uh, society is that there are pastors who are called to be pastors, then there are pastors who are hired. And so, and there is a difference. A pastor who is called will always be a pastor. But a, per, a pastor who is hired, once they are not getting what they need and benefited from, they are done. And so here's the thing, Jesus is saying, hey, a lot of pastors won't get it right, but no worries, I am the, the GOAT pastors. And what happens is you Pharisees, you are climbing in to the pasture over the fence, but you're not coming through me. That you are using the sheep for your personal gain, for platforms, for money. Jesus is speaking directly to this. And we may see this a lot today. Jesus gives everything he has for his sheep. Versus a higher hand will give according to what is given to them. And is that how we live our life? Hey, what you give, I'm going to give. This is competition. This is tit for tat. This is... Do you live your life... And uh, with a, a competitive nature, do you tr treat your spouse this way? And they're your friends, I'm going to give to you according to what you give to me. I'm going to match your energy. And Jesus says, we should not do that. We will never match Jesus' energy. He gave his entire life for us. And some of us give people a lot of us in hopes that they will give the same amount back to them. And I was talking with a, 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 a Kimmy about this, my therapist. <laughs> and we were going back and forth and, and, um, and I was asking her, I was like, what? I was like, what does this sound like? That like, that some people give so much of themselves to someone else so that they can receive the same thing back. And she said, if my intent is to receive the love back in the same amount that is, that is called manipulation. And I was like, wow. Like we, a lot of us think we are living from love, but we're living from manipulation. I want uh, just to be loved, and so let me give you what I need so that I can get it. And our issue is like, we don't love people the way they need to be loved. That is why we love people the way that we think that they should be loved, because that's what we want. And that is called selfishness. Uh, the original intent and of the word shepherd is like pastor. Right? And my hope and my heart is that I do not want uh, just to be one of those pastors that give according to what I want. And my hope for us is that is not how we live our life. And so Jesus says that he is the good shepherd, that he lays down his life for the sheep. We, he has done something that we cannot do. And you must ask yourself, are we at the point just to lay down our life for God? But it does not matter because Jesus has already done that. And he is leading and then the next part of that verse says this, like, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. This is what makes a good shepherd. A good shepherd knows his sheep and not only that, his sheep knows 
him. One of the most uh, remarkable things that Jesus claims is that he is the good shepherd and he does this by being relational. He is a good leader and a good pastor by being relational, not by being an authoritarian. Not by, hey, do what I say, and not as I do. No, he is face to face with us. This is why he is the good shepherd. Out of all of the images Jesus could have used, he chose an intense uh, relational example. Uh, someone once told me, if you are a pastor and you don't smell like your sheep, then you're not doing it right. If you were a shepherd and you don't smell like poop, how does sheep smell? I just think they smell like poop. Uh, if you then then you're not doing it right and he says that i am i know my sheep and my sheep knows me the like the and the most original sense that word no means two things and we're going to uh, just look at it here first it is this word that is hard to say is oida y'all just act like i said that right Right. And and this is and this 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 in the most original sense of no means to perceive and I can see it. Here is the thing about knowing we hear a lot that that like God knows our past. He knew us before we were even born. He knows us now in this present moment. But what we forget and what we may not realize is that he knows our future selves. And he treats us according to our future selves. And that's why it feels unfair, right? I deserve this now, but God is like, hey, I know who I am making you to be. I am treating you like that. And that is hard uh, uh, just uh, uh, to grasp. He, God, is continually teaching us how to be human because he made humans. And we say this all the time, well, I'm just human. We don't even know what human means. But he does. And so we are becoming more and more human. This is not a terrible thing. We're just living out what he made us to be. He knows your future selves. So he treats you according to that. He has good for you. My charge is to treat yourself that way too. Treat yourself in a way that, who we, that the person that you inspire to be. Some of us are still treating ourselves, beating ourselves up for past mistakes. Present mistakes. But there's a bright future. There's a good future for you. The second word is called uh, Nasco. Just act like I said that right too, okay? Um, and this is to know in a personal way through experience. This is, he says that he knows you personally. He is with you. What I love about God is that um, he is holy, which means that he is far from us. He does not think like us. He does not act like us. He's so far from us, but he is also God with us. But how can you be too? I'm thankful that he is two, that he's both at the same time because I don't need you on my level, God. But I need you with me. And that is the beautiful thing about him. And that he knows you personally. He knows your heart better than you do. We have a perspective of our heart. That's all. We don't know our hearts. We have a perspective and it's usually negative. But somehow Jesus looks past that 
and says, I know your intent beneath your intent, beneath that intent. And he sees that. And my charge, again, is to ask God to bring that to your attention. Help. Ask God, hey, help me to see my heart, myself, the way you do. So he knows his sheep. And he says that my sheep know me. A, a Christianity, these, this thing called a, a Christianity is not about simply knowing a bunch of stuff about God, but knowing God intimately. The same way a sheep knows its shepherd. I had, my a, a, a grandfather had sheep. Um, well, he didn't have sheep they stayed next to him and we would call the sheep over and feed it lettuce feed them lettuce all the time and they got a, a, to a point where we would yell and they would all come running and we would feed them lettuce through the fence then it got to a point where they would just hear us walking to the fence and they would come sprinting over because they knew, they knew us. Do you feel known right now? Do you feel known? Here's the thing, some of us don't feel known the way we need to right now. To feel that way because Jesus has the answer. He says, I am the good shepherd. And if he is your shepherd, then you are good. I've learned uh, sometimes that, that like, I feel abandoned sometimes by God. If you feel that way sometimes, you know, just raise your hand with me. You feel abandoned by God sometimes. Here is one of the reasons this week I discovered why I feel abandoned by God. It is because I am using, I, I have used the wrong definition of shepherd, right? I cannot see God because I'm expecting God to be in front of me. But if you look at the definition of shepherd, if you could throw it back on the screen, it says that a person who tends and rears the sheep. And a lot of us are looking up here, God, where are you? And God is like, hey, I am here. I am rearing you. What does that mean? So if, if and you look at this picture, have you ever seen, have you ever seen a shepherd, a modern day shepherd with cattle dogs rear sheep? Like, have you ever seen them get them into the pasture? It is remarkable. It is remarkable. Uh, let me show you, what's the next uh, picture? As you see from the first picture, it, it takes different shapes. The, the dogs are constantly, the shepherd dogs are constantly rounding out and pushing the sheep in the right direction. And if the shepherd dog sees sees sheep straggling, it then comes around and pushes that side in. And if this side is too wide, then the dog runs around and pushes this side in because there is a narrow passage to the pastor. And Jesus says that I am also the gate. The problem with the gate is, is that the gate is small. And we want it to be big. We want this big, open, and so we are like, why does this hurt so much? Why does this hurt so much? And what God is literally doing is pushing all of our sides in. And he is pushing us into this narrow passage. Man, we feel like we are struggling. We feel like, uh, we feel like God is mad at us. We feel tortured. Why am I suffering? God is like, no, I'm just correcting you so that I can get you into my safety. I think this is a very remarkable thing because you can see the shepherd is navigating the dogs. I call the dogs the Holy Spirit. You 
hey dog, over there, push this side in, push this side in. Hey, it doesn't feel good, I know, but I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you into my safety because Jesus says that I make you lie down in what? Green pastures. Rest. I'm pushing you into my rest, but that pushing does not feel good because we want him to lead from the front, but he is rearing us and all of our sides, but you can still hear his voice. He's saying, go, I got you. I'm behind you for multiple reasons. One, so that a wolf just don't creep up on you and take you out. If I'm in front of you, how can I watch behind you? And some of us think that Jesus is this shepherd that's just walking fast, saying, y'all keeping up? So wait, no, and you're walking too fast, and you're walking too fast as if you can, as if he can care less. No. Jesus is everywhere on all sides. Say, hey, if you would just, if you would just take this aspect of your life and align it like this, and if you would just take this thought here and place it here, and, and if you would just take this posture, like, Sink your gut in a little bit, you know? And if you would just do this and let me shape you. It won't be pretty. Maybe exhausting. But I'm trying to get you into my green, peaceful pastures of rest. Where I am. And this is why he is the good shepherd. Because he can be the pastor, pastor, the gate, and the shepherd at the same time, pushing us into his rest. So I have a shared challenge for you. If you believe that Jesus says that he is the goat pastor, the good shepherd, then what does that mean for you? If he is leading you, if you firmly believe, here's it, I just really feel this deeply, that some of us think that we are wandering off by ourselves, but he is actually still leading you. And that he will leave the 99 for the one. You may feel confused. I don't know what life is taking me. I don't know what's going on, but he's still your, what, good shepherd. And if you don't hear anything, I say I need you to feel that as you leave this room, that you have confidence that he is your good shepherd that you don't have to worry, that you don't have to have anxiety about what is next in life. And you don't have anxiety, have to have anxiety for where you are in the moment. If you feel like you don't have the control, you don't need to have it. Because the shepherd does. And so, You want us to take a moment and think about this and tell yourself if he says I am the good shepherd then I know what write it down make it personal if he is the good shepherd the goat pastor the goat leader the goat caretaker the goat warrior protector then what does that mean for me right now in my life? Let us pray. Father, for anyone in this room who does not believe that you are the good shepherd, Jesus. 
that you would not lay down your life for them. That you would not pay attention to them. When, when, they have, when they feel that you have so many other responsibilities, that they are not enough, I ask that this week, that this moment right now, that you show their hearts that you are their good shepherd. The greatest of all time. The one who knows them better than they know themselves. And who have a willingness for them to know you intensely and intimately. being our good shepherd Jesus this is one of the reasons why we love you In Jesus name we pray amen let's stand and sing